Hi guys, this is Anderson Thiago from New Wave of Rich and I have Metal full albums and I'm back with another episode of the Wave of Metal podcast. We started the episode today with a great spark from the dark. That's the opening track of the Night Lord, the new album by the Italian band Future's Vengeance. It was released by Gates of Hell Records and it's available on the channel. Give these guys a listen. And always, if you like it, buy the album. It's pretty standard already, but I like to start the channel by saying thank you to everyone who listened to this podcast, who follow my work on the channel. Because just last week, we got to 40,000 subscribers. That's 40,000 metalheads all over the world that are passionate about heavy metal and want to know about new bands playing old school heavy metal so thank you so much, this is mind blowing I never thought I would get to this and I hope to get to 50,000, 100,000 it would be nice to have the YouTube sign on my wall <laughs> but it, thank you so much for this and thank you, special thanks to my patrons just this month we've got two new patrons and I would like to give a shout out to Dona Rail and Andrei Mocano. Thank you so much for your support. And we have Josh Brown, he was already a supporter, but he upped his level on the Patreon. So thank you so much Josh. You guys are totally the best. And if you want to join them and be one of the supporters of the channel, of the podcast, please go to my Patreon account, the link is on the description, and there's also the option to do a PayPal donation. If you don't do Patreon, you can donate through PayPal just once, and it would be equally awesome if you do. Because I think there's a misconception about the work I do on the channel. To this day, there are people who still think that I make any money from the channel, from the views generated by the videos, and this is not true. I made zero money from the channel, but as the channel grows, it becomes more hard to manage it and more time consuming. And I think that the work I do here is a great way to help the bands, and the Patreon is the only way I found to receive a kickback from the hours I put working on the channel, on this podcast, and we are getting to three years of new Wave of Tradition Have Metal full albums. I already received some messages from bands and from listeners congratulating me on the three years and saying how the channel helped their bands or helping them to find new favorite bands, bands to follow now, and this is what my mission here is so thank you so much for it and without further ado let's receive the guest of the sixth episode of wave of metal podcast today we are talking with one of the most hyped bands at the moment in new wave tradition heavy metal their debut album burn the night was just released by no remorse records and we are talking with the guys today riot city how are you hello 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 Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty good, good man. Good. Man. How are you? I'm fine. And I know about Riot City for a long time. Actually, you guys have been on my wish list since I started the channel. Why it took so long to release the debut? Uh, well, we had a couple lineup changes and uh uh we had a lot yeah. of interruptions along the way i mean we had our drummer ty who wanted to leave the band and this was right before we played in chicago and right before we played in chicago we started recording and then everything just kind of got lost in the jumble there for a little bit and contrary to popular youtube believe kale's not a dick he's <laughs> actually a pretty nice guy oh, thanks boys <laughs> we got your back buddy yeah <clears throat> You no, know, basically what it was is that just a lot of interruptions and like a lot of bad luck, to be honest, like we, to the point where we even had corrupted files that wouldn't open for songs 
and everything like that. And then by the time we were finished, uh, it just wasn't where we wanted it to be. <coughs> so we have a bunch of tracks that are unreleased and we started again and came up with this album. That's pretty much it. So Burn the Night is being officially released today, but many people are, already have their copies by now. How has been the reaction so far? It's been great. Really well, good. Like, when I was over at Keep It True and they, um, uh, our label had a bunch of copies there and it sold out and um, like just, just the feedback I got off of that while I was over there, people coming up and how excited they were for it. It was, it was pretty awesome to see because we didn't, you know, we didn't really have that many expectations. We just kind of wanted to see how it, how it was going to go. Right. Especially after it took so long too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So seeing that and, you know, the YouTube response, the amount of views it's had on your channel and, a little over two weeks like it's 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 been crazy it's been awesome so. pretty phenomenal recently actually I, I was going to talk about this later but since uh, you guys mentioned I uploaded burn the night on the channel on the 29th of April and by May 1st it had a lot around 11,000 views and that was very impressive by sheer number of views, you were supposed to be third or fourth most view album of the month with just two days. <laughs> that's, oh, that's wild. That's, that's pretty insane, wild. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, YouTube thinks that two days are not enough to be shown in the, on the monthly stats, but you are 100% going to be on the May list. Awesome. And now the album has 30,000 views. Yeah. yeah. How did you guys explain all this attention you have been getting? Um, I don't think it's describable really for like in our shoes. People you know, want to listen know. to what they want to listen to and we're just writing what we want to write. So, you know, the band has always had hype around it. And even though it was quiet for so long and it kind of died down, I think people were still looking, you know what I mean? So once it came out, I think all those people kind of came back and everyone kind of jumped on it and it's been doing great really nothing but positive com comments on it and yeah we're very happy yeah because uh you guys have been hyped up since the demo like i said you were on my wish list and when i started this channel i didn't care much about uh asking someone to upload the their music on the channel to be honest and this is something that i Something I learned along the way. But the only reason I didn't uh, put your demo on the channel is because I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> and the album is and the album is being released by No Remorse Records. How did you guys end up working with such a great label? Uh, well, you know, I think uh, we got some <clears throat> friends around the world that hooked it up. Um, and then they just ended up giving us a message, sent us a message with a contract. And we just went along and went from there. About a year and a half later, we finally got the album out. But yeah, No Remorse kind of stuck by us the whole time, even though it took so long. And I think Chris kind of knew that it was going to be something nice and that people were going to like. So, you know, he's been nothing but helpful. And yeah, he's, he's, he's been, been great. Been very, very supportive. So a big thanks yeah. to him for everything that him and his label have done for us. And the patience. It, it just definitely all comes down to the fan base, really, on getting a label. You know, obviously you need some sort of hype and, you know. Support. Support. People talking about you and all that stuff, right? Whether it's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember listening to the album for the first time and describing it on Facebook as a banger, fast and no slow songs at all. Oh yeah. Yeah. How did you guys write the songs and why only fucking ripping high octane metal? Uh there's a lot of stuff we could talk about. Uh it's it's just what we like and you know, a lot of bands don't do it anymore. You know, they slow it down and whatever else, but we like fast. We like to play heavy fast. metal. And it just kind of came out. We're not going to, you know, scrap a song because it's fast and we need a slow song. 
we write eight great fast songs, it's going to be eight songs on an album that are fast, yeah. pretty much. We're not going to limit yeah. ourselves. And like, and especially since like the writing style and like writing dynamic in the band has changed since Chad's also joined the band too, because we've added a lot of more, you know, a few more melodic kind of parts to it too. So, and I'll, we all just kind of get together and just yeah, it's, it's, sometimes when one of us has a riff for us, a lot of times it's just, it just happens while we're jamming and all of a sudden one idea comes out and then feed off of that. A lot of times it doesn't work. We end up sitting there saying, fuck this song. And it, yeah. it, it gets faster live. So hold on to your hat next year, but you managed to record eight fast songs, but they don't sound like each other or like it's only one single long track. Was this something that you had in mind while writing the songs? I, w I wouldn't say so. I don't like, I don't think we really thought much about that, really. I just, I think we just came up with these songs and, you know, found eight, eight songs or seven songs originally that we were happy with on the album. We said these are the ones we wanted to use. I mean, yeah. And I, I think we did a good job, like making sure that nothing sounds the same, right? Like every every song's distinguishable in one way or another. So, you know, like um, I I don't think there's anything on the album that sounds similar to each other, really. No, I wouldn't say either. No, I said it. It just kind of worked out that way, and um, you know, every song. Just, they all have their own little personality to them, I guess. Yeah, they're just they're just different songs. The, yeah. You the, know? Well, the other thing is too, like you're taking songs from, you know, there's a couple songs on there that are from the Thai era, and then there's like Steel Rider was written while um, the band had a fill-in drummer for a little bit until they finally talked me into jamming. It took and a then, year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm. I played hard to get Anderson. I. I had to be courted appropriately yeah, yeah well okay we asked you once and we ignored you for a year and then we asked you again and i think you got the point so <laughs> and, then, and then there's you know there's the songs on there that were written with me so it, it's kind of easy i guess it's easier for us to differentiate what songs are from what time period right um so to us they definitely don't sound the same and like over the like the last what four or five years We've probably written about fifty songs. Uh, we we get rid of songs and, constantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those eight songs are just one of, or like eight of many, and the other many that we didn't release are probably never going to get released because there's a good reason why we, we probably hate them. We got <laughs> we got nine new ones on the board right now, though. So. And only one of them might survive. <laughs> Is any of them a ballad? No. No, but <laughs> there is a song that kind of slows it down a little bit. Yeah. But in a good way. Not, you know, it doesn't take away from Riot City. It's, it's a bang, still a Riot sure. City song, but it just happens to be a bit slower. We have been talking about uh, the album for some time now, but I think it's time for the listeners to have a taste of it. What about if we listen to Burn the Night, the title track? Sounds great. Now let's do it.
Now we are back and another thing that has been getting a lot of attention is the artwork <laughs> with the eagle shooting laser from his eyes and also the eagle has teeth, uh -huh. which is something that people are <laughs> Eagles not have teeth. talking a lot. Oh, oh. Eagles don't um, have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> are you new? I guess so. Oh, and also, many people are comparing it to Judas Priest. Yeah, Judas Priest, one of the best bands of all time. So, you know, it's a it's a homage to that band for sure, and heavy metal in general. You know, like, Judas Priest isn't the only band out there with that style of artwork. Right? Personally, I don't see it at all. Like, you know, it might be a bird, but like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. ours has teeth. I get it. I, I get it, but like, I don't at the same time. Yeah. I mean, like, their bird is on a yellow cover that's swooping down. Ours is just shooting a fucking laser. Like, come on. And he has teeth. <laughs> and he has teeth, which I've learned that eagles don't have teeth, apparently. There's my dumbass. So he's, he's like a crocobird. There, <laughs> he's a crocobird. There's more, um, there's more covers that it's actually has more similarities to than screaming for vengeance like creating a monster by gravestone i mean that's kind of what we what we thought when we saw the cover for the first time too yeah but you know yeah the comparisons can happen and like you know it's nothing but good really we can be compared to judas priest all day and we'll take it yeah yeah <laughs> and uh just like it just suits our album title burn the night too you know what i mean it's just it just all fits together, and, you know, we're pretty happy with it either way. I wouldn't go back on the artwork at all. No. No, me neither. I think it boils down to the vocals being uh, sometimes similar to Halford and Ripper Owens, and people see the eagle and make the connection to Judas Priest. Absolutely, they do. And we were talking <clears throat> about this yesterday, and, like, I'm still a fairly new singer, and... I'm not trying to emulate anybody. This is just happens to be the way I sing. And if people want to compare me to Tim Ripper Owens and Rob Halford, absolutely. I'll take that. You know, for someone that's been singing for four years, I think that's pretty cool. With so. no vocal lessons whatsoever, <laughs> I would like to add. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. So Yeah. But like even if if you listen to Halloween and listen to the new songs that are on the album, like you can see where Kale's powers progressed over the years, right? Like um, that Halloween recordings with Ty. So that one was recorded about four years uh, ago, three years ago, three years ago, like, that no, like two three. and a half. Yeah. It's an older song and it's a homage to like our friend who has passed away, but you can definitely hear the progression in, in my voice. Kale's voice. Right. Like you can hear how like he's found, found how to project more properly right in the newer songs versus like halloween and the demo if you listen to the demo especially the demo. i think he's found where he wants to be it's just a matter of maintaining it throughout yeah yeah so figure it out <laughs> and that's where the vocal lessons now come in yeah go to school you guys literally uh, just answered my next question because I was going to talk about Halloween at Midnight because it's it sounds different from the other songs and I was going to ask you guys to tell a little more about this song but you just did that yeah yeah exactly like we we wanted him to be on the record with us right so we, we took a song that we weren't f really fully happy with it's a good song, but we, we took it off the eight song slot and put that one in. Kind of remixed it to sound a bit more like the rest of the album. And I'm happy we did it. I think it worked out good. Yeah. And like you mentioned, it was recorded with your former drummer, Ty, who sadly passed away, right? He deserved to be on it with us. So that's why he is. I mean, like he helped us write a song, you know, songs like Burn the Night and 329 as well. Like yeah. and that, you know, it's three, three years ago, so. You see, not to like this song very much, but it's my favorite song on the record. Sorry, Chad. What? <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. It's a good song. I, I liked it. I was the one, like, in the beginning kind of fighting to get it on. And then we took it off, and then it just worked out that it ended up back on there. 
Yeah, right. Like it, it was on my initial track listing for sure. So we still got to teach Chad how to play it, though. Blow <laughs> <laughs> me. But maybe, maybe I like it so much because it it has something of King Diamond in it, at least for me. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's just a little darker than the rest, maybe. It's raw, you know, even though it's still melodic and it's not. You can you still know. hear the youth of Riot City. I was going to say, that song's still like, even though I listen to it now, yeah. it takes me back to like you, you when I first joined the band and we first started writing this song. Yeah. I actually think you guys had this song mostly written when I joined anyways. Yeah. So, it yeah, takes me it, back to that. It's definitely a bit more youthful and definitely kind of like our earlier songs, but. Sound like a bunch of amateurs trying to write a song. I don't know. I think the only reason I didn't really like it is because I had such troubles with the recording of it. And then once it was recorded, the files all corrupted on it. And I couldn't open the files for like months until I finally figured it out. So at that point, I was just like, fuck this song. I don't want anything to do with it. But like, it's coming back to me now. It's a good song. I'm glad it's there. I'm happy with the recording as well. I think we'll start playing it live a little bit more now too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still impressed with the guitar work on the song because, like I said, I was listening to the album for the first time. I was walking the dog, and when the the solos started, because it's a, a twin guitar solo, I had to stop walking to pay attention to it. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, no, we were actually talking about this yesterday i think as well because chad was saying that some people really liked that solo and i stopped and actually put it on and listened to it and it was great and that's all rolled in right here well, what, yeah. I, what i was saying anderson was um that guy that asked on your page about um like new wave trad solos and you suggested listening to that song so i was telling kale about it yeah yeah because um I'm actually not a. I don't. I'm not. A, I don't have any musical knowledge, so uh, it's difficult to me to talk about uh, the musical part of of a song of of some album. And I usually focus more on the vocals, but on this song is specifically the the guitars were, I think, the best part of it. Oh wow! Thanks, man. Uh... Pretty sweet compliment. But, uh, I would agree. There's actually not a lot of vocal in the song. It's a very guitar-driven song. Yeah. That dual guitar solo where Kale and Rolden are switching back and forth is pretty fun live because they do some pretty goofy stage antics during that solo. <laughs> and I can't get enough of it watching these guys do it. Let's listen to Halloween at Midnight, and then when we come back, we'll talk about playing live. Sure. Perfect. Let's do it.
guys, you were talking about stage presence and playing live. You were already confirmed in two of the most important heavy metal festivals in the world. How are you feeling about playing up the hammers and keep it through? Oh, it's exciting, man. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. exciting. It's it's definitely an honor. Like for me, I, I get to play hammers twice this year, and then I get to go back to back on kit, which I didn't think. I honestly didn't think I'd get back to keep it true that fast. So to be able to go back after just having a great experience there, it's going to be completely incredible. Like, I'm, I'm pretty good. stoked. Yeah, Europe better watch out. The boys are coming. <laughs> We're invading. <laughs> uh, like I, I told you guys in the beginning, at Keep It True, I stayed in a guest house with some uh, Greek, Greek people, and they are awesome. So you guys are in for a treat in up the hammers yeah we're... and they are actually uh doing kind of a campaign for me to go to up the hammer so maybe we will meet there awesome absolutely yeah, absolutely sure. yeah. That'd be look great. forward to it man love a couple beers and then uh, keep it through chad yeah are you going to be the the guide for the guys in germany oh absolutely i've already been telling them all, all about what what happens and what goes on so trying to get them all prepped up <laughs> yeah uh we're just making sure the strip clubs will be open when we get there there's none in loud <laughs> he's trying to give us <laughs> but we're just gonna throw them at him i'm so. gonna open one for our arrival <laughs> <laughs> yeah oliver if you're listening the boys need uh need some nudes okay <laughs> <laughs> And just like that, we're dropped. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't think he he will drop you for something like this after what happened with uh, John Cyrus. Uh, no, I I was I heard well, all happened. How, how Cyrus awful is coming was, with us? How awful was that? That was embarrassing. Yeah, I've heard all the stories of just like, wow, that's too bad. Uh, sorry, all you people got screwed out of a good show there. Yeah. And what about tours? I read in an interview for Metal Brothers that you are trying to book a European tour around Up the Hammers. Are you staying around and playing in Europe to keep it true? Um, nothing probably between Hammers and Keep It True, but um, probably the two weeks before leading up to Hammers. Um, It, it's looking like like we still got to plan it all out, but it's looking like it's going to be a Traveler and Riot City co-tour. Because um, we both, we're both on Hammers. Um, we're both pretty much on um, Hell Over Hammerberg. So it's just, it, it just makes sense to do it together. Now let's not skip the fact that we both share a drummer too. So that makes it easier for Chad. Yeah, and well, no, it makes it harder for me, but um, well, it's so going to be awesome. Time, time management wise, yeah, I mean. Time management wise, and um, we're gonna be hitting the gym. You know, like we're we're all friends, right? Like we mm -hmm. we share a jam space, like traveling ride city yeah. jam in the same house, um, same house. So, and we've all known each other for years. So it it's just gonna be an awesome kind of friends trip as well as a tour, right? Like so, um, yeah, I, I think it's gonna be gonna be really cool once we get it all nailed down and solidified and stuff so. we've all shared the same stage at some point in time too pretty much like with matt and jp well, we've all yeah we've all been in bands together for yeah yeah or around each other for years yeah. right so. yeah matt's filled in for riot city i filled in for gate crasher when matt was in gate crasher yeah chad's played with him in chrome like, yeah we're we're all pretty tight-knit There, there's like six metal bands in Calgary and nine musicians, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe you can find a third band with Chad on drums and bring it on on the tour. Okay. No, I'm Chad, on it. Chad's I'm on at it. his fucking cap, so. <laughs> no, more, no more bands, Chad. But, the, but this is something that's hap that happens also on my hometown in Brazil because... Uh, my friend is a drummer, and he plays in all the bands of the of the the city. Yeah, we're we're hard to find. Yeah, apparently, it's a worldwide shortage on drums. So, moms, 
Stop buying your kids guitars. Buy them drum kits. <laughs> and what about American and Canadian fans? When can they expect to see you? Whenever. Uh, <laughs> whenever. <laughs> so, we, we were we were talking about going down into the states a few times, but uh, we have a pretty busy busy schedule at the moment. So, you know, it'll be a. You know, I don't know. It a one-off thing, maybe, if we end up doing it, like, after our album gets released on the 17th. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. You know, obviously, Europe's going to be a pretty crazy, expensive tour. So, you know, we've already toured the States and to better parts of Canada. <laughs> oh, Canada is so big that, like... Empty space it's, to it's drive. Hard, it's hard to do it because you're looking at eight to ten hours between every place that you play and unless, unless you want to play in like small towns like every province you go by but it's yeah. not really feasible either and sometimes it's just it doesn't seem like playing a tuesday in car stairs is not fun yeah. i think we do great in carbon where they don't have gas <laughs> <laughs> carbon get a gas station Fuck, it's 2019 for fuck's sakes <laughs> uh i understand what you're saying because i I actually talked with uh, Joff from Gatekeeper, and he told me all about the hardships of touring uh, through Canada. Well, yeah, the, the crazy thing is, is he's basically the closest thing to us if we head west, and it's an 11-hour drive. Yeah. If not more, if, yeah, if the roads aren't England. shut down or something, you know, like accidents. That's time of year. Yeah, our BC's not on fire like they are every summer. Yeah, that old BC. Last year we drove back from Vancouver and there was a forest fire right driving, on the side of the road. Driving, Literally, yeah, like, like we so, drove yeah. through a forest fire. We did burn the night because it was midnight when we drove through it. <laughs> Trying to get home. Hung over. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, now we talked about Canada and touring through Canada, but. Can someone please explain what's happening in Canada? Some of my favorite releases of the year are from Canadian bands. And even the interviews on this podcast are uh, 50% by Canadian bands. What are you guys are drinking there? <laughs> Good beer. Lucky lager. Yeah, lucky lager. Lucky lager. lager. <laughs> um, I don't know. You and I kind of talked about this in the, in the Traveler podcast where... Like it, there's nothing to do here for eight months but sit down and write. Yeah, you don't want right. to go outside because you'll freeze to death. Yeah, like you know, it hits minus thirty, minus forty, whatever, and you're just like, no, I'm not going anywhere. So you just pick up your guitar because there's nothing else to do. So it's, you know, that's that's how it's easy to get like fifty songs in the bank to, you know, to pick and choose and scrap them away and. Um, I don't know, it, it, there just seems to be this push over the last five years where everyone that has the talent's actually going for it instead of, you know, just kind of accepting that they're going to play Vancouver for the rest of their lives. Well, yeah. I, I think Canada finally deserves to have a little bit of recognition, uh, recognition amongst this like music scene anyways. We've been trying for, like, this country's been trying <laughs> since the 80s. I mean, bands like Anvil... You know, so, and some bands Cider, did sort of, you know, Cider, get a little Cider, bit, yeah, Razor, 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 you know, Sacrifice. You have all these bands that they're all great. They're, they're, they're all top notch, grade A bands, but just somehow they just blipped over the radar. Like nobody gave a shit about because them they because they're Canadian. So it's taken 30 years of P Canadians who didn't stop believing to fucking finally make this happen. And you know what? I think Canada finally we're, deserves to have a little bit of recognition. We're, we've we're, been trying for 30 years. We're pretty much at the point where, like, New Wacom needs to be a thing. <laughs> Seriously. Like, sounds so stupid. But you it it does, but it does. But, like, look at, look at all the bands yeah. that are coming out, right? Like, Kale and I put a list of, like, 20 bands together yesterday yeah. that have all done something or are all capable of doing something out of here. Like, it's... There's there's bands everywhere in this country that are solid. Mm -hmm. Just this month we we have uh, you guys and also I think Alagash. They are from the east yeah, I, side of Canada. Their album the other day. I've never heard of them before. It was good. They're east. Yes, it's it's good. And right. Newfoundland. Yeah, I think Newfoundland. Uh, 
And now it's time to listen to our last song of the day before we finish the interview with Riot City. And this is Steel Rider.
Okay, and to finish the, the interview, I would like to know what are the next plans for Riot City, and I hope we don't have to wait. Uh, the demo is from 2014, we are in 2019, plus five, to wait until 2024 for the next album. Well, do you want a new one by Keep It True? <laughs> That would be nice. <laughs> We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Like I said, we got nine new songs up on the board. So. Let's, let's just say we're having sleepovers at the jam space to get this fucking thing rolling. Yeah. yeah. We're not We're not even waiting for the release and we're starting on album two. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, get, it's getting pushed right now. And Nora Mars wants it right away. If everything is right, you'll see it by uh, April 2020. That would be very nice, and I think it's going to be sold out just like the Bird the Night was on Keep It True. Well, so far, the songs we have, I would say it's a little bit better. <laughs> I like these. Oh, they're sounding good. I like them so they're, far. They're sounding cool. Yeah. You still, you'll still hear the same side of us on the first album with a couple of twists and turns, and you might break your ankle along the way, but that'll, that'll, it'll heal. You'll be fine. Yeah. Now you got me worried because there are a lot of examples of bands releasing bad albums and saying that's the best of their careers. Not saying that's your case. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, well, we're gonna we're gonna try and write as many songs as possible, polish them up, and then decide from that set of songs what we like. And if we don't like any of them, then we're back to the drawing board, <laughs> yeah. and it takes yeah, another year. We're not gonna release something that we don't isn't like. Good, right? Especially as our second album, like it's it's got to be good. <laughs> we're not gonna release a shit album, and like the songs we're writing right now are, you know. I hope same, we don't release a shit album. They're the, same, they're the same along the same lines of the first album. You know, one, you know, they're still fast. You know, like we said earlier, one is a little bit slower, but <clears throat> but in a good way. You know what I mean? It's not it's not clean by all means. No, no ballads. No, no ballads. Not yet. No. It's it's chanty slow. Yeah. <laughs> Ant for me. Feast in, feast in the air. Kind of yeah. Stuff. yeah, exactly. Guys, thank you so much for this interview. Yeah, it should be good. Thanks a lot for uh, giving us a call and doing this with us. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. We're going to hang up here and start working on that second album. Thank you, and good uh, rehearsal. Thanks, oh, man. Thanks, thanks, man. Have a good day. <laughs>